Mary, can you hear me now? I'll give it just a sec. Yeah, it looks like it's working now. My battery's died. So I'm going to start that all over again. Good morning. I'm Kathy Hester, and welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> and thanks for hanging in there when you couldn't hear me. Um, Good morning, Terry and Megan and Joanne and Linda. And thank you guys for hanging in there while my sound went bad. I was doing some tests this morning, so I must have used up my battery. Um, and thank you, Terry, so much for pointing that out because I have been known to just keep going if nobody says anything. So what we're going to do today is a little on the crazy side. We're going to do something crazy, people. We're going to be peeling a spaghetti squash. Why? Why, you ask, I am sure. Um, usually, you notice we, when we cut, cook spaghetti squash, we cut it in the middle. Maybe we make it like a little casserole sort of dish. Hi, Rosa. I'm just going to turn the sound down a little bit. Um, or we cut it in rounds, because that's how you get the longer spaghetti strands. And then after it's cooked, we peel off the skin. Well, I wanted to think about what's the absolute easiest thing for me to come home and eat. I don't want to go put, cook the spaghetti squash in spaghetti sauce. That's hard to say. But, and then peel the gross tomatoey stuff off and lose sauce. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel the squash. We're going to cut it into rounds. We're going to put it in the slow cooker with some spaghetti sauce. I'm going to use up some of my strained tomatoes from yesterday. So it's a little bit different. There is a recipe in the revised vegan slow cooker. This recipe is not in the original edition. And I'll show you Kate Lewis's picture. So that's kind of what you're looking for. Since I'm not doing a one-to-one -one for this, it'll be a surprise like it always is when we open up things in the evening. So a spaghetti squash has a tougher skin, but not that much. If it's like right now, this is fairly fresh. If I had had this for a month or so, I might have to put it in the microwave for a few minutes or in the oven to soften it up. But I want you to see, I'm going to peel about half of it, actually two thirds of it with you. This part right here is going to be a little bit problematic because it's a dip. But let's start with an easier part. See, it's just like a potato. You just want to get a firm grip. And another way that you can do it is you can go ahead and let's cut off an end because we're going to be cutting off an end anyhow. So if we make that sort of flat, we can hold it this way, right? And while this isn't going to get everything, we'll have to come and clean it up. See how much easier that is? And you're using gravity to help you get through some of this. So it's not as easy as maybe peeling a zucchini, but it's not that hard. So have any of you guys peeled? And see, then I'm going to take it here and the parts that didn't get really well peeled, I'm going to repeel that. Then I'll start up with the putting it on its edge again. But I wanted to show you here just because it's just not that, it's not as bad as it seems. Even for me today, I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to peel the spaghetti squash. It seems like such a chore. And it's not. Plus, you can take out your frustrations. It's a lot like the um, garlic smasher, right? I've had a hard day. I'm going to peel the spaghetti squash. So what about you guys? I want to know either have you ever peeled a spaghetti squash or what's your favorite thing to make with spaghetti squash? Or have you never used spaghetti squash yet at this time in your life? Which I am hoping to change. I'll just let you know that. And see, right there, let's, let me show you. So that's like one of those little harder spots. So that's thicker. So instead of trying to, oh, I'm just going to take it off really easily like this. In fact, we can just keep coming on. And you can almost peel that 
part off, but I'm going to have to um, use a knife to get it. But this will just make it a little easier. So if you come into a hard part, or a you can always peel back the other way or just work on peeling that little tiny bit. And you can also come from, I'll show you this from the front. You can also come from the bottom of this up. Whatever's easier. Sometimes it depends on the squash, how many like little hard spots it has on it, what might be easiest. So just let yourself become one with your spaghetti squash. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this part off here. And I know since this is an indention, it's going to be harder. But I have an idea for it. So let's see what happens. Oh, Fran um, grew some spaghetti squash. That's awesome. We have trouble sometimes growing squashes here of any kind because of squash borers. They, like, I remember trying to save a baby pumpkin in the other house I lived in, and I went in with tweezers to get the squash borers out and everything, and it was, it was intense. And a squash borer came out of that pumpkin, which made it not quite as appealing to me. Let's see if I can get in here, so I'm going to push a little harder and try to come in from different ways to get that little part that's indented. There we go. Okay, so that's how long it took to peel it. It really wasn't that bad. You can look and see if you've left any pieces of peel on or if there's maybe a bad spot that you want to get off. Other than that, get some of this grain off. There we go. Just looked a little green for me to be happy with it. And let's see, um, Joanne's never peeled a spaghetti squash. Well, now is the time. And I also, I know it's winter squash time and at some point I will be peeling a butternut squash for you too. It's pretty much the same. Well, I might use this smaller knife to cut off the ends. Because this is so big, and actually, I really need a bigger cutting board to show you how to do this properly. Instead of the little one that happened to be there. Okay. Actually, I'm going to still need this guy. Ooh, and Joanne said she made spaghetti squash last night with a cashew cauliflower Alfredo sauce. Yum. So we're just going to cut about the same size. Now, if this was smaller and you can keep your knife on there, great. If not, make sure that you're holding it so it's not getting your fingers. We're going about an inch wide, okay? And the closer we get to the end where it's going to rock, the more, actually let's do this about halfway. We're going to do what I said about keeping Make sure both hands are out of the way. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get these seeds out, just like we would any other time. Put this over here. And Fran said she just blanched and peeled her garden tomatoes. Yum! And so since this end is the end, right? I'm just going to get those seeds and guts out. And I'm calling guts are those stringy parts. I don't know. Does anybody know if they have a proper name? So the hardest, the most in time intensive one was that one. This one I can literally just scrape around. And it doesn't take much time at all. I don't know my own strength. I ripped that right out of my own little hand. And you can kind of see here, the way that's trying to come out is how the strands start to appear. And a 
it doesn't have to be perfect. There's a little bit of a little bit of guts in there and gonna hurt anybody. It's not like it's poisonous to eat. It's just not a pleasant texture. And it takes away from the illusion that this is indeed pasta. And I don't know about you, but for my family, I want to keep that illusion alive as long as I can. <laughs> okay. We have two more to go. So, I mean, this has just taken a couple of minutes very little time. And then we have another one that this is also the end. And there's not much in there. So this is easy peasy. So there, I prepared the butternut, uh, I did not prepare butternut squash. I'm lying. I prepared this spaghetti squash for you. Ta-da! And that's all it took. I had peeled just maybe a th quarter of it before we got on just to see I wanted to test and see if this was going to be like a hard case if I needed to put it in the microwave or heat it up or something the older the squash is the harder it will be to peel so know that I know spaghetti squash guts I always feel weird saying it though it's around Halloween so why not right so what we're gonna do so and if you make spaghetti squash to use as pasta, this is one of the best ways to do it because in fact, it, the strands will be longer because they go around like that. When you cut it in half, it's like cutting, breaking your pasta in half before you cook it. So I'm gonna move these knives here. I'm gonna set this over to the side for a second. And we're just gonna make a quick sauce after I wipe the guts. This is as gory as my kitchen gets right now. <laughs> so we're going to make a quick pasta sauce. Yeah, it's really easy. It's really easy. So let me get a measuring cup to see how much of this um, tomato puree I'm putting in. Because it's just the leftovers from yesterday. I expect... And this is just strained tomatoes. You could use tomato puree. You know what else you can use? Spaghetti sauce from a jar or a can. Ooh, there's, there's gonna be like one and a half cups. So that's perfect. So that's what a normal, I'm trying to get some of this feels hot in there. It's a little more than, than um, I'm just, a little more than that it's going to be a little closer to, to three quarters of a cup if I can get all every last little bit out which is my goal okay so a, a heaping one and a half cups of tomato puree I'm also going to put in these diced tomatoes with basil and garlic you don't you could use regular diced tomatoes you could just use crushed tomatoes and again, we're just making a quick spaghetti sauce, basically, with the stuff that we have on hand. And that's why if you already have some sauce, and actually I have some um, jackfruit ragu from a class I did this past weekend, but it's not quite enough. But I may end up mixing it in here. I'm trying to decide what I'm gonna do. Um, and Joanne said she brought a, a kabocha squash this morning at Tra Trader Joe's. And I love getting squashes there because you buy them by the piece. So if you get there when they open up the carton, you can get an amazing deal. Sometimes spaghetti squashes that would be intimidating to peel, but you could do it. I have faith in you. Okay, so this is about three cups of stuffs right here but it's just plain old tomato stuff um, 
And Fran's saying, how do I slow cook my squash in the Instant Pot with a glass lid or pressure cooker lid set to seal? Um, if you're doing it on the slow cooker setting, it doesn't matter. You can use the glass lid or the other one. It doesn't matter at all. Um, if you're going to do this in the Instant Pot, I do have, and I don't know if I have them up online. If you have the Ultimate Vegan Cookbook for your Instant Pot, I talk about that. Let me grab it really quick. Um, in this one and so let me get the timings because honestly I don't remember off the top of my head so let me see if I can find did this spaghetti squash yeah 114 so when I cook it in the instant pot I cook it on the pressure cooker setting I just want to tell you so I actually cook it whole can you guys see that Hole and then it, the peel just comes out and you just scoop out the inside. You can do that in the slow cooker too. Either way, you can just put it on slow cooker. I do. That's how I make my pumpkin pie, uh, my pumpkin puree. Is I take a whole pie pumpkin. Sometimes I might slice off the top with the stem if it doesn't fit in. I have a taller slow cooker that works really well. I don't put any water or anything in it, and I just cook it and then you let it cool. The peel will come out, or on a spaghetti squash. You scrape the insides out, and then basically you scrape out the pumpkin, and it's pureed. But this is what the squash looks like, and uh, it can change. I do put some water in because when you're pressure cooking, you always have to add water. So if we did this with a pumpkin or a spaghetti squash or anything else, we'd have to add some water in there. And I am cooking on high pressure for about 15 minutes, and I put it on the rack, like the rack that comes with your Instant Pot. So I would do that if you're going to use your Instant Pot anyhow. That's my opinion. Um, and Jackie, I'm sorry you're having trouble with your internet. I, I am actually still plugged in hard wired into the internet and that seems to have helped some of my issues. Okay, so let's go back to the sauce. So right now we have about a cup and a half of tomato puree. And we've got uh, one and a half cups of diced tomatoes with some seasoning in there. I am also going to go ahead and put in about a tablespoon of tomato paste. Mostly because I know that that Lidl um, strained tomatoes, those were pretty weak. And it needed some extra tomato flavor. I'm going to put probably about two teaspoons of dried basil in there. I'm going to put about one teaspoon of oregano. And then I have, oh, that's tomato powder in the same jar <laughs> in my pantry. Ta-da! Powdered rosemary. So I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon because I want this to be kind of heavy rosemary because that makes me feel very fallish. I'm also going to go ahead and stick a bay leaf in here. It's just a small bay leaf. So if you have, yours are big, you could use maybe um, half a one. I'm going to put about an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. If you use salt, you could put in some salt now. I'm going to go ahead and put about a half a teaspoon of salt in there. Because I want, I'm still going to taste it and reseason, but I want it as close to where I want it to be. I could either use garlic powder, but I'm going to go ahead and throw in half a teaspoon, whole teaspoon, just because I'm feeling it of um, garlic. It's got plenty of time to cook down. And then I'm going to put about three quarters of a teaspoon of onion powder in there to kind of start off the sauce. So let me mix some of this up a little bit. Then I'm going to smell it. You could taste it as well. It's not going to be what it's going to be and it's very final. Um, 
stage. It's not going to be melded, but you can get an idea. I think you get better, I, I get a better idea smelling it sometimes than tasting it. Okay. I'm going to change this onion powder. So then that's one, one and a half. And I'm going to put a little more rosemary in there. I'm going to, I think I put a quarter. I'm going to put another eighth of a teaspoon. And there's something else. What else? Oh, the balsamic. I need to put the balsamic in there. So I'm using. Um, this balsamic, which is really thick, it's a grand reserve. You can put it on at the end, but I would like to put a little bit in now. Let me get this back and I'll show you. So I'm probably going to put, it's very, see how thick it is? I'm probably going to put about two tablespoons in there. And I may adjust it a little bit more later. You could also put some wine in here if you have some red wine. Though often I, I've grown to like balsamic better than wine sometimes in the sauce itself. Okay, taste it again. Okay, it's not going to have a huge depth of flavor. I'm also going to go ahead and put in about a cup of chopped frozen bell peppers. Mix those in there. And I'm going to put a little more, maybe another half a tablespoon of tomato paste. And again, that's just because I feel like these, the strained tomatoes that I put in, this brand in particular is pretty um, bland. It doesn't have a lot of oomph to them. Like, and by oomph, because it just should taste like tomato, right? But usually tomatoes pack a punch. Let's try it one more time. Yep. That tastes more like what I'm going for. And with the, the bell peppers, that's going to add a little more of that, like, urgh, spaghetti sauce yumminess. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our spaghetti squash in here. And this was a fairly good size one. But we can also let's see if I can get that one in there a little bit. And this should still cook just fine. I'm not sure how I'm doing as far as sauce to squash ratio because every squash is a little bit different but I'm going to just put that in there. The top part is going to cook a little bit um, slower than the bottom. Since it's noon, I will probably cook this on high for a while um, and then switch it to low or just switch it, keep it on high. If I was doing this at nine, and this one actually hooks like this, so I'm going to lose less um, liquid because there's this gasset, gasket. You'll notice you have to kind of get to know your slow cooker. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to call this six. This one has a varying amount. So I'm going to call this a six quart and I'm going to let it be on high. And then I'm just going to come back. What I will do if all goes as planned is I will be taking um, some tongs and just kind of pulling out with um, tongs and spoon to kind of break down that cooked spaghetti squash into noodles there into the sauce. And if we need more sauce, I'll add it. I could also just not put in all the spaghetti squash, but honestly, let's just go for it. Cheryl doesn't like as much sauce as I do anyhow. Um, and Fran's saying, what about adding mushroom powder? Absolutely, you could add mushroom powder. I was thinking of adding some mushrooms, but then I'm saving them for something else. You could add mushroom powder, tomato powder. Um, when I open it up, I'm going to be adding nutritional yeast. Um, it, I will be adjusting the seasonings 
including the balsamic. We could choose to add some mushroom powder then as well. So anything, because like while this sauce tastes good and I can anticipate what it's going to taste like later, maybe I'm overestimating some of my spices and how fresh they are. So the whole slow cooker live thing is about the reveal and the unveiling. And so you can see that I don't just do one thing and then throw it and throw it into some bowls and there we go. I taste it a few times, adjust seasonings, and that's what's going to make the difference between an okay slow cooker meal that you're just happy to eat something and a really great meal that you're going to want to eat the leftovers of. And that's really important. And uh, Joanne says, I now have a small basket to keep my spice herb jars when slow cooking so I can taste, season to taste when I'm done cooking. I always put them away and then forget <laughs> what I decided to add in the pot wasn't in the recipe. Exactly. Um, and she also loves mushroom powder in the recipe. So what I do too, and I'll be keeping all these on the counter. Everything I put in, I keep on the counter. Before I come back later tonight to unveil this, maybe I'll grab some mushroom powder. Maybe I'll grab something else and add it in and talk about that too. Okay, do you guys have any questions about what I've done? I mean, it really, this is with a lot of talking, a half an hour. And that's with me being super particular about the sauce. You could have literally peeled this squash on the bottom, put pasta sauce from a jar or from your freezer or from wherever and put this on top and be done. So let your tiredness level or where you're at today drive you from what you're going to do. Because even if it's canned spaghetti sauce, this is still a really decent meal. You're eating a lot of vegetables. It's very good for you. Tomatoes are good for you as long as you're not allergic to them. And thank goodness I am not. Okay, awesome, you guys. Um, if there's, if I don't see any questions in a minute, I'm going to go and actually start getting some work done, and then I'll see you guys later tonight. Okay, have a great day, and I'll meet you back later for dinner.